Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Fyodor Sazanovets and I'm a senior .NET developer. This video is part of a series about solid principles and how to implement them in C-Sharp and .NET. Solid principles is something that every object-oriented programmer absolutely needs to know. And in these videos I will show you how to implement them in .NET and C-Sharp. For those of you who don't know what solid principles are, SOLID is an acronym. It stands for Single Responsibility Principle, Open Closed Principle, Risk of Substitution Principle, Interface Segregation Principle, and Dependency Inversion Principle. In this lesson, we will talk about the second SOLID principle, Open Closed Principle. In the previous lesson, when we were looking at Single Responsibility Principle, we ended up with the following solution. We have a class called Text Processor, which has the only responsibility of converting text from one format to another. We also have a File Processor class, which only responsibility is to read files and to write the output of our program into new files. And we also have a class called Program, which acts as an entry point to our program. This class forces the other two classes to work and produce the result. And so the next principle that we will be talking about is called Open Closed Principle. And this principle states that every class should be closed for modification but open for extension. If we have a look at our text processor class, then we'll see that it does not follow this principle. Right now, the only thing that we are doing in this class is reading the text and applying HTML paragraph tags to every single paragraph. But what if we receive new requirements and we'll have to apply additional changes to our program so it will be able to recognize markdown tags and convert them into corresponding HTML tags. Markdown, or MD, is a textual format that is very frequently used to write documentation. For example, GitHub uses it extensively as a documentation format for its repositories. And here are some examples of markdown tags. So are these ones. If we come back to our text processor class, then we'll see that it's completely closed. And to add this new functionality, we need to completely change it. And this is precisely why our current solution does not adhere to open closed principle. This is why we changed our code based on the existing code. And this is where it is. For example, the first thing that we did is remove dependency on file processor class from inside of the text processor class. All we're doing now is sending pre-prepared text into convert text method. Other than that, we haven't changed the logic in any way. We are reading the paragraphs and we are applying opening and closing paragraph tags to every single paragraph. But this time, to enable us to extend the functionality, we have added this keyword, virtual. And so, by using object-oriented inheritance, we have created a new class, and we called it MD Text Processor. And to instantiate MD Text Processor class, we are passing a dictionary into it, where MD tag is the key, and opening and closing HTML tags are the values. Over here, we are using override keyword, which means that we can add functionality to the existing class from the base class. And in this place, we are using convert text from the base class the same way as we've been using it before. And so this variable already contains the text where each paragraph is already surrounded by opening and closing paragraph HTML tags. And then we're just returning the output text. But afterwards, we are going further. We go through every single key of our dictionary, every single MD element, 
and then we are replacing occurrences of this element to correspond in opening and closing HTML tags. First, we are making sure that these tags occur in text as an even number. And afterwards, we are replacing MD tags to HTML tags. Whether they are closing or opening tags depends on their position. And this is what our program class became. File processor and text processor now work separately. And we can configure the dictionary for MD text processor as we want. The main reason to use open closed principle is to make sure that you are changing as little code as possible if requirements change. We made this dictionary configurable for exactly the same reason. For example, our client may want to add some CSS class into these elements. This is why we separate the configuration from the code that is using it. Open closed principle was invented in the 1980s when the process of developing and deploying the code was expensive. So it was really relevant back then to make sure that the code changes as rarely as possible. Of course, we live in a different day and age, and these days requirements change really frequently. But still, even these days, writing code in such a way that you don't have to change it frequently will help us to keep our code clean and will also help us to prevent introducing bugs into it. For example, if you have already written unit tests covering existing classes, you won't have to change unit tests. This is why it's important to write code in such a way that it's closed for modifications, but it's open for extension. And to do so, you will need to develop an ability to foresee in what way requirements are most likely to change. Of course, it's not always possible to foresee that. And this is why it will not always be possible to adhere to this principle 100%. After all, principle is not the same thing as the law. But in any case, you will save yourself from major headache if you'll try to write code in such a way that it adheres to this principle most of the time.